creature living, living in a ranching, ranching endgame of civilization. I am, I am intimately acquainted with the landscape of loss and have grown accustomed to carrying the daily way of despair. I walk, I walk clear cuts that wrap around, around mountains and drop into valleys and climb ridges that drag my watershed after watershed. I have sat silent near empty streams that two generations ago flashed in my whiteness like uncountable salmon coming home to spawn and die. A few years ago, I began to feel pretty apocalyptic, but I hesitated to use that word, in part because of those cartoons I've seen of crazy penitents carrying the end of near signs, and in part because of the power of the word itself. Apocalypse. I didn't want to use it lightly. And then, and then a friend and fellow activist said, what, what's it going to take for you to finally use that word? Will it take, take the death of runs of salmon so large that people are afraid to put their boats on water before they pass by? So large, the horses were afraid to get water. So, so large that you would hear them long before you would see them. Or maybe, or maybe it'll take the death of flocks of passenger pigeons so large they darkened the sky for days at a time. So large they were as loud as thunder, moving six miles an hour. Maybe it'll take the death of flocks of Eskimo curlews just as large. Maybe it'll take returning to the sea off San Diego into a dead sea. Maybe it'll take putting dioxin in every mother's breast. Maybe it'll take 90% of the large fish in the oceans being gone. Do you think that it will undergo a voluntary transformation then to say in a sustainable way of living? I mean, a lot of people at least seems to have some kind of uh, agenda to to make it more sustainable. Well, there are there are people that would like to be comforted with what I think is the illusion that that certain certain partial steps will be okay or will be sufficient, but uh, it's it's a much more I mean, it's a much more thoroughgoing thing that's going to have to happen to change it. Uh, the whole question of a voluntary change, I mean, that depends on what you think is is efficacious. What is this, What would be effective? And that's a whole question in itself. The question that Derek Jensen brings up from time to time, or, or regularly, I would say, is that he just ridicules the idea that there'll be a voluntary shift away from it. But I, I'm very much more hopeful, frankly. I think that when we see uh, what's going on, that uh, it, it's not to me so unlikely that people will say, "Well, this is this is causing such negative results in every single sphere. Why wouldn't people think about doing something different?" I mean, to me, it's it's more irrational to think that 
that people are not going to be able to uh, confront this and, and draw the obvious conclusion than it is to say, oh no, nobody will ever fear from this suicidal course of, of civilization and technology. I mean, who knows? I, you know, it's impossible to say, of course, but I, I just I feel that there are grounds for not just thinking that, that there would never be any uh, shift in, in people's consciousness. up to seize the state but found that the state did not exist that in reality we faced a system stretching far beyond our borders but we were born in the struggle and we have defeated other empires before this one we did not overthrow apartheid through elections or decisive military engagement we defeated apartheid and we will stop this war by making it unworkable on the ground through thousands of collective acts of rebellion and disobedience itself causes and profits from the various injustices we struggle against, how is it logical to believe the system would change without being forced? So much of what I feel like needs to happen right now is just, they need to stop, really. You know, I'm for some reason, I was sort of reminded of this line that a friend told me uh, where, I, where I've been staying in the last few months, he said, nature's default mode is, is healing. And really what, what we need to do to, you know, end a lot of, you know, the, the difficult, destructive tendencies that are perpetuated against the natural environment by industrialized nations is just to simply stop. And, and let the natural world recover. And it's not industrialization that's going to create independence. You know, it's, it's basically sowing the seeds for all of our dis eventual destruction. And, and that way, you know, development is really just, hip really a hypocrisy, you know. Uh, it's a vi violence with language, that, that term. 